let's talk about automation and orchestration. Now, when you take any cloud exam, we, of course, you know, would expect to know what automation and orchestration is. So first, let's clarify the difference, because traditionally, this has been an area of confusion for a lot of students at first. But in reality, it's really simple. So automation is where we're going to take a task and make it run by itself. This is similar to folks that have been in the IT industry a while. For example, if you did Unix, we always had cron jobs that would kick off at whatever time and it would run a process. That's really automation at its simplest form. Orchestration is, on the other hand, is going to take one or more tasks and basically bring them together. For example, we're going to have a process that's going to kick off, it's going to validate that this, uh, for example, this uh, cloud orchestration framework, this is actually from uh, Cisco, basically, from their cloud uh, deployment platform. Basically, we're going to take, for example, an order request. It's going to go and automate this and validate, first of all, does the user have the authority to be able to request this, or the access, or the account status, etc. And then it's going to go out and, OK, well, we're going to go ahead and deploy 10 new virtual machines. It's going to go ahead and kick off a process that's going to deploy the VMs. And as part of that, it'll also have other processes that will bring up, for example, the networking interfaces, spin up the storage, add more memory, whatever the requirements are as part of these uh, basically scripts that are going to kick off. That's really the difference. So automation is a single task. Orchestration is where we're going to take one or more tasks and bring them together. Now, when it comes to automate and orchestrate, some of the areas that we commonly need to really dive into in the cloud is to be able to automate provisioning, to automate data collection, to automate monitoring. For example, we might want to pull specific services or have an uptime check. This is, these are little ways we could automate our environments. We may also want to be notified if there's a problem. For example, if we're using AWS, we could use, for example, SMS, SNS, other services like that. In Google Cloud, we have Cloud PubSub, etc. So there's many different ways that we could just have one process kick off another service, for example. We could also orchestrate the data flows where we pull data, let's say, from a stock ticker application. And then we bring it into the cloud. We run basically a query against it. We take out any kind of data that we need to basically place it, uh, format it appropriately into, let's say, an internal application. Workflows. What's a workflow? This is basically a way we're going to create basically a sequence of events. And a great example of that is AWS Simple Workflow Service. Runbooks, another way that we could really bring together all our requirements is through what's called a runbook. Now, again, if you've been in the IT industry a while, whether it's Windows or Unix or even mainframe, you're probably going to have some kind of a process put together basically to bring up a system, to deploy additional services, whatever that requirement is. You probably have some kind of a baseline set and some kind of a process to kick off to meet whatever requirements that you need as part of that deployment. For example, Azure has a runbook service as well. And with Azure, for example, this is a fairly new service, probably about two, two and a half years old. But basically, you can go ahead and automate everything in Azure by creating what's called a runbook. And you could also do this in PowerShell. So basically, what does this do? Basically, let's say I want to deploy specific uh, virtual machine services. I can go ahead and specify that I'm going to automate these services every week at this time. I'm going to bring it up in a certain region or a certain zone and make sure that the user base is able to access these services you know, on these specific days. 
and then bring them down when I don't need them anymore. Some of the typical, common, and almost necessary in all, pretty much 100% of the cases I run into is we need to, of course, maintain our data, maintain our systems. And to do that, we need to have snapshots. We need to clone our systems. We need to patch. We have to bring them up and bring them down. These VMs, we may not need to have them running 24-7. We need to be alerted as well. Now, to clarify, what is an SOP? Now, one of the things on the exam we're going to need to really sort of get into our minds here is to know the difference between a baseline, a standard operating procedure, workflows. These are terms you're going to run into. And I need to make sure, you know, again, even though, you know, this is more of a free course, I want to make sure that you are basically ready to go for the exam. Okay, I want everybody to advance whether or not um, you have the time for proper training or you're just sort of refreshing your memory. So go into the exam, know these terms. A good amount of the exam, and this is true with Cloud Essentials as well, a lot of the exam is just terminology. So what is an SOP? Why do we need one? These are things that you just want to know. So basically, every cloud vendor has a different name for an SOP. It could be a checklist. Google calls it a launch checklist. Azure calls it a checklist, but it depends on the use case. AWS likes to call them an operational checklist or best practices. And again, as you could tell, sort of can be confusing. But in reality, a standard operating procedure at its simplest form is going to be a workflow that you're going to follow step by step. Or the system is going to bring up from an automated perspective step by step. Now, two, being uh, in the military, one of the things I did have quite a bit of and in, in, uh, experience in was to follow what's called a standard operating procedure. And basically, you couldn't work on a radio system until you shut off the power, you notify the right people, you had approval. That's really what an SOP is. Workflow. What is a workflow? Again, a workflow is going to be more or less a standard operating procedure, but basically a workflow um, is a little bit different in the sense that typically workflows are going to be more for uh, more for processes that typically like react to something in a lot of cases. But basically, a workflow could also be an SOP. So I want to bring up that term uh, to uh, to just let you know you may uh, run into that as well. So what do we want to know for the exam? The main point here is to know automation and orchestration. What is the difference? Know what a run book is used for. Know what an SOP, a workflow, is as well. These are the main areas for this module. You'll need to go into the exam, ready to, to roll, and make sure that you know these terms right off the bat.